Right, here we go, part two. Firstly, a big thank you to my subscribers for supporting me this far. As of the time of making this video, i.e. bloody ages ago by the time I actually upload it, there are precisely 300 of you. <laughs> and now that I've finished looking at boobies, we can get on with it. Take it away, Neffy. Hello, in there, are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? DNA supporting systems are free known and possible, some unknown layers of error connection. Whenever a mutation affects a homeo box genes, those which affect morphology, the error is repaired. This is why all organisms, millions of experiments have suffered deformity, reverts the world to pi, structure without fail, every single time. There is not one in the millions of attempts of known example in which an organism did not revert to its wild type within one several generations. More homeo box bullshit then, in a complete rehash of his fifth paragraph. Fantastic. Anyway, since I'm just that lazy, I sent off this package containing a real-life lab coat enthusiast quad error, and promptly set him loose on Nephilim's face. My first thought on this, backed up by Quad Error, was that Nephi hadn't stated what these error correction systems were, so I'm willing to bet Tim Minchin's piano, leg, and wife that Nephilim can't describe how these processes actually work. I will give you my piano, one of my legs, and my wife. I freely admit I don't understand either, so I'm not going to pretend I do. Which is why I asked Quad Error, who responded to these assertions that errors are always repaired in his own words. Short answer yes, with an if. Long answer no, with a but. As for reverting to the wild type, Mendelian genetics, motherfucker, do you speak it? I only need my recessive ginger face to prove you wrong here. But for an added bonus, here are those puppies again, because everybody loves puppies. To finally put your homeo box bullcrap to rest, it would be useful to have an example of some mutation that has occurred preferably to humans, over multiple generations, with a morphological phenotype. Ta-da! Club feet. Thanks again, Quadera. Link in the sidebar. Hello, in there. Are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? Here's a paper by Dr. William... Oh, for fuck's sake. Dr. William Dembski, a prominent mathematician philosopher, he's done an analysis that shows, one, that the supposed benefits of mutation can't overcome the negatives to produce anything useful because the bad outweighs so greatly the imagined good, and two, that mutation can't add information by accumulation. It's heady math, so if you're really good at math, you might take a look. Am I really going to read through Dembski's paper just to point out the flaws that others have pointed out before countless times, just so Nephi can ignore the issue anyway? Well, yes, yes I am. I'll let someone with more fingers and toes than me deal with the actual math of this paper. For all I know, and indeed all I care, it could be spot on. Anyway, link in the sidebar, which seems to have migrated below the videos these days. It's basically a load of stuff about random and non-random searching and probability of the success of these searches, and something to do with random treasure maps, and one of them is right, but what's the probability of a one-legged pirate eating a mushroom on a Thursday under a tree made of fucking kittens? I may have gotten confused at this point. After a couple more read-throughs of Dembski's probability analogies, I worked out what he was getting at. Basically, the treasure map analogy works so far as a successful map being the one that leads to the treasure. All the rest are garbage. Fair enough, a simple metaphor for the selection of a beneficial mutation. He goes wrong when he says, well, how did we know that the map was the right one? Where did that information come from? Let's factor in the probability of this. At which point, every evolutionary biologist slaps himself in the face with the most convenient limb available and yells, that's not how it works, you shit. The point is that we don't know which map is right, so all occurring maps are followed by someone, and if one is lucky enough to have gotten the right map, hooray, they get the ladies, can go forth pumping out children, all of which get a copy of the working map, while everyone following the shitty maps has to sit in the corner eating tree bark while their testicles shrivel from disuse. Hello, in there, are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? Professional mathematicians such as Dr. William A. Densky and others have demonstrated with mathematics that statistical loss of evolutionary change taking place by overcoming the loss of information negativity of genetic code is essentially zero, to the incredible power of. It is one to a number greater than the estimated number of particles of matter in the observed universe. The link Nephi provided doesn't work, but let's face it, it would probably be just as facepalm invokingly painful as the last Dembski paper. The point is, if you don't know how evolution works, you can't allocate random probabilities to evolutionary events, then call them impossible. You don't have to do this to impress me. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1! Never tell me the odds. Go do something more useful, like finding the probability of surviving a week's stay inside Saturn. Hello, in there, are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? All of the observed mutations which affect morphology produce weakness, deformity, death, but never anything new or permanent. The deformities disappear after one to several generations because of a process called DNA error correction. We have observed in labs millions of mutations affecting morphology over the last 70 years and all have been negative. Am I going fucking mental here, or is Nephi just repeating himself like the alcohol-induced kebabbery of the drunken night before? Amazing. Anyway, to finally unplug the rectum of Nephilim's morphological buggery, let's have a look at some examples. <laughs> Thank you.
I could go on and perhaps in another video I'll do just that. But for now, let's continue with the debunkery. Hello, in there, are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? And yet evolutionists claim that genetic mutation is the base mechanism that causes morphological change for evolution. How can this be when all of the observed mutations the last 70 plus years of research demonstrate that mutation causes only weakness, deformity and death in relation to body plan and morphology? Why then do evolutionists still claim mutation causes evolution? Is it not because without change the DNA morphology cannot change unless they are stuck believing that it must? Mutations can and do cause beneficial changes, and so mutations provide the basis for evolution. Hello, in there, are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? The idea that complexity in organisation that is required to create morphological features can arise by mutation is has been completely discredited by genetics. Millions upon millions of mutation experiments have been conducted, even to successive generations of creatures. Never has anything morphologically new appeared or any permanent morphological change in any creature due to any experiment. The results are consistently the same. Weakness, deformity, death or no detectable change. Are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? And this is why evolutionists today have been carrying on more and more about natural selection as a mechanism for evolutionary change. The problem with this is it's not a mechanism for evolution either. NS selects from existing traits. It does not, nor can it create. It only spreads existing traits to be more prominent in a population. For something to be new, it must have a mechanism and an origin. NS provides neither. Nephilim's last few arguments have all worked off as incorrect starting assumptions about mutations. It's a lot like trying to build the Eiffel Tower on a stack of pineapples. Mutations provide the genetic diversity, and natural selection acts upon that diversity within populations. Easy. Hello, in there, are you awake? I'm talking to you. Are you listening? Adding to the absurdity that mutation is capable of causing morphological changes, the fact that for a mutation to be passed on to offspring it must occur in the DNA of the germline cells, sperm or egg cells. This reduces the potential number of mutations that could accumulate astronomically, not only because vastly reduced numbers, but also because of recombination which removes mutations which affect homeobox genes. Has Nephilim finally proven evolution to be a lie? Will science be up to the task? Will Dembski ever get off the island? And most importantly, Will there be more pictures like this? Stay tuned for the Ultimate Nephilim Debunkage Part 3.